get ready to work. Halfway around the world, Temple Fork Outfitters offers a behind closed doors look at how their gear gets made for the outdoors. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this, Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind the scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the outdoors. Fishing draws me to far away places. South Korea's Seoul and Incheon area sits one of the world's five biggest population centers. Just look around. Here, technology and manufacturing rule. Even so, people remain tied to the sea. Fishing shapes work, wage, and hobby exactly why we've come to the home of Temple Fork Outfitters Fishing Rods, a shop run by Byung Jin Im, affectionately known to us as BJ. So I love fishing. That is also my hobby. It is his work too. He is the best. He's a wonderful, wonderful person um, and one of the most gifted rod engineers on the face of the earth. I mean, he's, he's that good. We could not be what we are without him, there's no way. Jim Shulin should know. He helps run Temple Fork Outfitters, a Texas-based fishing rod company home to some of the biggest names in both the fly fishing and conventional rod business. This machine can replicate that. Jim agreed to travel to Korea and help us better understand TFO's rod building process. This is uh, where the magic starts. Workers call this the rolling room. Here, raw stock carbon fiber lines the walls. A material called carbon fiber prepreg, meaning carbon fiber with the binding resin already in it. Three times a week, Three it's coming in. Week, boom, 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 in and out. It's like eating warm donuts every day. <laughs> Mr. Kim rolls the prepreg onto his cutting desk. He marks each sheet for each specific rod model. Based on exact measurements in that master design book of his, a book full of secrets. So if I'm counting right, he just marked out 12 pieces. So I think that would be 12 rods. Lays out his guide, gets them just right and cuts. Everything is so exact. Am I wrong to think there's merit in doing it this way? Do you like fine made Italian shotguns? They're all handmade. <laughs> Once he gets these cuts, you can see how they're stacked up over here. Yep. Workers label and name each stack. It's the uh, name of the city, Saltwater, and how many? 50. Uh, Mandarin number is 03. 03. Ah, yes, the mandrels. This is stainless steel that is you know, machined down to, and look how fine the tips are on these things. That's like pencil lead. A hair. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> these steel rods create the exact sort of genetic code of each rod. The point is, these are the essence of each individual rod, so unless these are exact, the rods won't be right. 
Workers start by cleaning and polishing mandrels hot out of the oven. Then, Mr. Kim takes over. The action actually helps the resin evenly cover the entire mandrel. Cracking the whip. This is the process where the patterns join the mandrels. Mr. Bond and Mr. Kim now align and join the carbon fiber pattern flags to the mandrels. This work takes very steady hands. They run a small heating iron over the fabric. It melts the resin and locks the carbon fiber to the mandrel. You know how many burns I'd have on my hands by now? <laughs> See, I'm being serious. <laughs> Up next, Temple Fork's rod building process really gets rolling. And later, Ugh. rod building gives me the willies. Ugh. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Appledorn's Resort, Suzuki Marine, Action Track Chairs, Mountain Dew, and by Central Boiler. Tucked away in South Korea's biggest manufacturing district, a modest facility home to fishing rods. A shop where 16 dedicated craftsmen and women build on Temple Fork Outfitters' fishing legacy. With the carbon fiber cut and attached to the mandrel, the rod building process now rolls on. It literally takes a couple of seconds to turn a sheet of fabric into what looks like a fishing rod. A worker loads different diameter tapes for certain rod models. There's definitely some secrecy to this darn step. An exact layer of tape covers that entire blank so that when they cook it or cure it, the rod stays exactly round. They say the taping is just taping, but there's something about this machine that's secret. It's just taping, Bill. Okay, that's as much as we're gonna get out of Jim. As soon as the mystery tape goes on the rods, they go in the oven. Mr. Kim hangs each mandrel. Every blank in the place gets cooked for 90 minutes. But again, here's the problem, more secrets. All they'll tell us is 90 minutes. The temperature curve, that's a secret. And what happens in here, Another secret. What you're essentially doing is you're bringing these resins um, up to a melting point so they all bind together. And instead of layers, it now becomes one solid piece. It's another of Engineer BJ's closely guarded TFO rod secrets. It's a big secret. <laughs> 90 minutes later, the rods come out of the oven properly cured. Problem is, the hot rod blank grips the mandrel. A hydraulic arm quickly pulls and pops each blank off each mandrel. And like that, they pop out and they are complete. And Mr. Kim grabs those still hot mandrels and retreats each, and the process starts all over again. Meanwhile, the warm blanks sit and cool for about 30 minutes. Then, the toughest job in the place, let me tell you. Yes, there is a job in here I can do. Somebody's got to pull all that tape off of every single rod. Believe it or not, 
That's one. This work goes faster by hand versus some machine. <laughs> At least for the folks who actually know what they're doing. Is it break time yet? Where did everybody go? The production team heads out the door and around the corner, together. We are friends, uh, we are family. That's why. BJ's employees all break as one group and eat lunch on his tab. Every day they gather. One big family to him and he, he feels responsible for them. And After food, <laughs> all chips sort of go on the table. Break means Korean chest. What locals call Chang Ji. This intense lunchtime tradition almost always ends with a win. <laughs> Up next, Team TFO cuts rods to size. And I try and finally dig a few rod building secrets out of TFO. Can't let the cats out of the bag. Can't get them back in. <laughs> Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Topper Easy Lift, Banks Outdoors, Game Fair, By the Yard Outdoor Furniture, and by Ice Castle Fish Houses. BJM knows fishing like few other South Koreans. I love the fishing and uh my, that is my job and my hobby. He also knows fishing rods, exactly why BJ runs Temple Fork Outfitters South Korean production facility. Following BJ's engineering process and the vision of TFO's rod designers, workers produce fishing rods with the conventional rod blanks now rolled, wrapped, and baked. You look very nice today. Even BJ gets his hands dirty. <laughs> well, sort of. This step takes an extra pair of hands. BJ happened to have them. BJ helps Mr. Char grind down each fully cured rod. This takes weight off the rods and smooths them out. I don't know if you can hear that, but the vibration makes the rod sort of sing. It's like they're excited to move on to the next step until they meet this guy. Mr. Cho, proprietor of TFO's Essential Torture Test. I know that's totally normal for a rod, but it just gives me the willies every time I see it. Mr. Cho bends and flexes every single rod to make sure each can handle just about any abuse future anglers might inflict. That is nothing more than quality control, just making sure they are ready to go. If the rod passes his test, it's on to this guy. Then it goes to the paint booth. Mr. Lee preps the paint booth the sky's the limit on colors. He pushes the rod through a rubber squeegee, tips the paint pan back, and then draws the rod back. I don't know what it is, but color just brings them to life. A very simple but effective coloring system. When you start to see the magic happen, that's exactly what it is. They're coming to life. So pretty. I could sit and watch this all day. Although I might overheat. You see, hot air swirls over the rods in the booth. They're brought up to a temperature that that paint cures. There's not as much mad science in that part of it though. <laughs> nope, hot air equals tough paint. Simple enough, right? Then Mr. Cho gets his paws on the rods again with a slightly gentler approach. You might even say silky. Well, silk screened. 
efficiency, he centers each rod and then rolls on the company logo. Then checks to make sure each lines up just right. The rods sit for a bit on the drying racks and are now ready to leave the production facility. <laughs> Let me explain. It's upstairs at the facility. Look at this, this giant machine. It's called a coating machine and it sits quiet because BJ had sort of a larger plan. Which takes us across town to BJ's Buddy's Shop. He's friends with these people and part of the community. He wants to give them the business and keep them and their families you know, happy and healthy and working. Five workers wrap guides onto each Temple Fork Outfitters rod blank. Watch this. First, she lines up the thread, then drops the guide on and quickly spins the thread to hold the guide in place. Pedal power helps control the spin. It's a pretty simple process, but it's a very important process. Um, the guide spacing, everything straight and alignment. BJ's friend then double checks every single rod. Only then does it go into the coating machine, much like the one back in BJ's shop. Now we wait. These rods will twist away an hour or two while the epoxy cures and dries. We'll let that happen and get back to the work in just a few seconds. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Magnum Research. Select Minnesota GMC dealers. Powers Machining Incorporated. And by Minnesota Horse and Hunt Club. Even South Korea's nail Biting traffic won't stop Temple Fork Outfitters from getting fishing rods to market. After the guide wraps dry, the rods get trucked, well, <laughs> actually carred, back to Temple Fork Outfitters' main shop. Only now can the crew get a grip. Mr. June, who happens to be BJ's nephew, whips up a batch of epoxy to join the cork grips to the blanks. He mixes in a little mystery ingredient. That material is actually emery powder. It's the same stuff used in fingernail files and sandpaper, and they add it to the epoxy because when those real seats go on and that epoxy dries, the stuff just gets locked together forever. First, Mr. June glues a spacer inside the cork. He then passes grips over to Mr. Kang, who actually joins a handle to each rod blank. He twists on the cork and makes sure it is centered perfectly with the guides. Once the epoxy dries, the rods are now ready. Well, actually not quite yet. Each first gets a stamp of approval from the team. Then, one last quality control look-see. Anything they might see gets a little red dot like this one. It's a part that they'll either go back and fix and make right again, otherwise it goes into the garbage can. If the rod passes that final inspection, the finishers attach labels, pack each rod in a wrapper, and stack for shipment to Texas. A 12-hour flight, or in fishing terms, about five million seven-foot rods away from Korea, this place, Temple Fork Outfitters World Headquarters. Centered right here in Fort Worth, Texas, USA. Hello, I'm Danny. Yep, Danny Greger, the guy who oversees TFO shipping. Shipping department, there you go. Danny and his team pick and pack rod orders all day long. In an hour, each of us will pull about 10 orders. That's 
rinse it, rinse and repeat. And just like that, James in Cleveland, <laughs> your order's ready to go, along with the rest of them. Temple Fork Outfitters Legacy. Rods that are beautiful to the eye and feather light in the hand. Crafted by a very special group of people. It's a sense of pride, no question about that. It's fun. The fun part is when you get people sharing their experiences using our product out there in the field. So, and that's the real reward.